everyone and welcome back to another video. This one's a little bit different than usual and it's actually a recording of an Instagram live. This Instagram is with one of my really good friends, Samira Kasai. They run Kasai Thrive, a tarot reading and tarot teaching business. They talk a lot about decolonizing tarot and about spiritual bypassing and just serve a wonderful community. I wanted to share this conversation with you just because it gives you a new way to um, just learn a little bit more about where I really came from and why I started doing this kind of work and honestly it was just a really really juicy conversation I had the best time we do reference a lot of things throughout this live, so one of the things we reference is an article that I recently wrote for Medium that was published in Human Parts. It's titled, The Self-Help World Needs to Stop Ignoring Its Privilege, and if you are interested, I will leave that article linked in the description, along with the podcast episode that I also recorded with Samira. And we also talk a lot about coaching, so the best way to stay updated is to sign up for my email list, so you can do that through my link tree, which is always linked in the description or you can just do that by going to my website. There'll be a little pop-up that comes up and you can just add your email there. And otherwise, if you are interested in hearing me talk about internalized racism, self-worth, and a little bit more about my story, then just stay tuned. Awesome. So first off, I'm wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are and how you end up becoming a self-worth coach. Yeah, totally. Um, so my name is Roshni. I was actually born in Nairobi, Kenya, and I moved to Texas when I was about five. So, um, yeah, I've just been, I grew up in Texas in like a small suburb outside of Dallas and then moved to Colorado for college and have been here for about eight years. Um, so I have like a background in psychology and education. And then in terms of just becoming a self-worth coach, um, I honestly, it really kind of started a, like I feel like the process started a year before I actually started my business. I just went through some like bad experiences at the end of college and I lost a lot of friends and I really had to take a closer look at like my own habits and my own mindset. And I hadn't even like known really what boundaries were or how to set boundaries before or anything like that. So I really was kind of starting from the ground up, but in, you know, changing the people that were in my life and in, um, setting boundaries I realized like I'd never valued myself before and I also had never like I felt like I was constantly performing for love like I felt like I was going above and beyond for all these people in my life without really giving anything back to myself or without prioritizing myself and so I realized like okay the foundations of my life have been kind of in being unloved and in being unworthy and so after that realization it kind of set me on this whole path of personal growth and changing who I am and unlearning and learning and that's still the path that I'm on but that's kind of the journey that brought me to um, being a self-worth coach and realizing that I'm not the only person who feels like this and so it, as much as I'm on this journey if I can share you know how I've gone on this journey of, or how I've started this process of self-love and self-care and kind of consistency in my life like that's been a big um a big part of what made me feel like I really want to do this as, as a coach. yeah oh my god that's so amazing and I feel like so many of us go through that especially in college or in that like early 20s phase of like having to actually learn that you're worthy of love and that you can set boundaries and going through the process of learning what boundaries even are and so the mm -hmm. fact that you are kind of alchemizing those experiences into something that you give back into the world is so inspiring. And I have like a small follow-up question that just came into my head, but I'm wondering if you ha had like exposure to self-worth coaching before you decided to become a self-worth coach. I hadn't. Um, so I'd heard of life coaches and stuff, but what I when I was really sitting down to create like my signature coaching package and really saying like, okay, what am I teaching? Mm -hmm. um, I realized that everything kind of came back to that core of self-worth. So whether you're having, you know, relationship problems or, you know, and I'm not trying to streamline everything to be like one simple answer or anything, but it can, like, an issue of worthiness can manifest in so many different ways in our life. So even if you come to coaching thinking this is the problem, more, more often than not through the coaching, you're going to realize, oh, it's actually something else. I'm holding myself back in this way or, you know, something along those lines. So when I realized, okay, everything kind of, is funneling back to this core idea of worthiness. I was like, why don't I just make that my thing? So I actually hadn't heard of it before. I, I was like, I don't even know if this title makes sense or if people will understand. But mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, I'm just, 
I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then you mentioned in the Medium article, which is amazing, and everyone should go read it if they haven't read it already, but um, it's called The Self-Help World Needs to Stop Ignoring Its Privilege, and it gave me so much life to read, and I've read it multiple times. But in that article, you talk about how as you moved into the self-help personal development industry, you had a lot of internalized racism come up. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what some of those experiences were like. And maybe for people who might be listening who don't know clearly like what internalized racism is, I'm wondering if you could go into a little bit of that concept as well or how you see it. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually am, um, I have an episode coming out soon that I am uh, going to record this week about internalized racism and self-worth, just a whole podcast episode dedicated to that. Cool. So um, if you're interested in this topic, keep an eye out because I'm going to go like way more in depth in that podcast episode. But um, I, you know, something that I didn't really realize that came up in my research of internalized racism was that it's like inherently connected to the victim mentality. And that makes so much sense for me because I was like, wow, you look at the world through the lens of like, this is systemic oppression, this is where I'm othered, this is where I'm different, and all these systems and, you know, roles in life weren't, were set up for people who aren't like me. And so because of that, you really experience that loss of control and you feel like nothing, like you lose that kind of sense of agency over your own life because you just feel like even though there are options out there, those options aren't for you. Mm. And another side of it where you just you just feel inherently inferior. Like that's the easiest way to sum up internalized racism. You have learned through basically what you've heard from like white society that you are inherently worse and there's nothing that you can do to get better. So, you know, there's a lot of like overachieving in people who experience internalized racism or a lot of like um, overscheduling themselves and making themselves really busy because they're trying to like achieve this level of like worthiness and this level of like validation that they don't feel they have but the thing is no matter how many accomplishments or how educated or whatever success you achieve it's that inherent feeling that you're just inferior that's not going to go away until you address that specific feeling mm -hmm. um, but for me you know I'm, and I mean that in general is a direct hit to your self-worth if you just feel like you're worse than everyone around you that's like a complete link but um, for me, you know, especially when I started my self-worth coaching, like it, it was different because obviously like my niche itself is new. I was new to it. I'm still like young and kind of learning this industry and all of that. So that was hard. And I wasn't immediately like, oh, I need to, um, like, I, I'm not going to get clients because I'm Indian or I'm a woman mm -hmm. of color. I didn't necessarily think that but what I did think was oh I should be serving my community so what can I do for South Asians and I kind of niched myself into like I'm a person for South Asian people that's out there and then I realized you know I I do feel kind of like distance from the Indian culture and there isn't that much that I really know so in some ways like I started to feel imposter syndrome with that but also I realized like that was internalized racism talking to me and saying like, oh, if you put yourself in a little box over here, then you can allow yourself to exist. And so through this process of starting my business and promoting myself, and um, I realized like, I, A, I don't fit in a niche in terms of my experience or my personality anyway, like in like a small box, but I had to really write that permission slip for myself to like, to have a voice, to yeah. have a and no one was there saying this is the space for you I had to like create it and that was a lot of emotional work for me because I didn't feel like I deserved it so it just in my journey I would say that that's the biggest way that it's come up for me yeah oh my god that almost makes me think of like like I'm thinking a little bit about tokenization too and how in a lot of instances at least with me I struggled a lot with feeling like I had to position myself and like almost play off of my race or play off of my queerness and have that be the entry point for people with me. And it was almost like I was telling myself that no one would value my perspective just as a person, but they would value my perspective as a black person because that made it novel or different or like very hyper specific. And so it's, it's interesting. I think about the ways in which we have been tokenized in our lives. And then we tokenize ourselves by telling ourselves that we're only valuable if we like, lean into the ways in which we've been othered by society. So I really appreciate you giving voice to that in such a concise way. That was exactly how I felt too, because I was like, 
even if I box myself into Indians, not every Indian person is going to relate to this journey or to relate to what I'm talking about. But then I'm also doing a disservice to every person of a different nationality or race that is dealing with these really core personal issues that just wants someone that understands what they're talking about. But then I'm saying, oh, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of narrowing my audience to not connect with the people that inherently connect with my message. And I think I'd rather reach those people than just say, oh, you need to have th this kind of demographic for me to talk to, you know? Yeah, yeah, so interesting, so interesting. And definitely goes back to that whole self-worth thing of like only feeling valuable if you're in a particular box or like even feeling, I don't know, what's coming up for me too is just the sense of like, oh, like my people will value me and they will see what I bring to the table, but maybe a white person like wouldn't see what I bring to the table. So let me just go towards the people who I know are going to embrace me and accept me, you know? Absolutely, yeah, completely. Wow, so many, so many light bulbs going off in my head. Okay, so the next question I had for you was also going back to the piece that you wrote, which again, everyone, everyone should go read it. Um, but you talk specifically about manifestation. And I think in this like spiritual corner of the internet slash the world, manifestation has started to really blow up and become almost like a lifestyle for people. And so you talk about manifestation and you mentioned that just talking about manifestation is missing the point. So that spoke a lot to me because I actually had an experience where I was trying to learn about manifestation. I was studying like all the courses and content and there was one super popular manifestation teacher that teaches that because there are more millionaires and billionaires being created every day, that means that there's no scarcity in the world. And that immediately just like made me feel so small and so unseen because there's there's a whole racial wealth gap that we have. We have a racial wealth gap, we have income inequality. And so to teach that because there are millionaires and billionaires in the world, there is no scarcity is completely missing the point. Hi, Amanda. Um, yeah, it's completely missing the point. I think it, it only tells half the story. And so I really liked that you pointed that out. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how you're seeing this, what prompted you to write that. And yeah, just your perspective on this whole thing. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, yeah, I, like similar to what you said, I kind of had that experience where, you know, I would read about money mindset or I'd read about other things. And as much as I love that encouragement of like, you know, the quintessential like rags to edges story or like the you can do it too kind of story as much as I needed that motivation to even get started with everything it also I, f I constantly found myself questioning things or like underlining things on almost every page and being like is that true like can we just say this as like a blanket statement that you know it's as accessible to everyone or that you know there aren't certain barriers to entry that other that some people have that other people don't and you know, I think that like it, there needs to be a balance because on the other side of it, there are people that say, oh, well, it's all politics with all this and, you know, like manifestation and all the woo-woo stuff like that doesn't matter at all. And, you know, I think there does need to be a balance of both. And I think like as BIPOC, we like deserve to have faith and we deserve to have like hope. And we like if there is, you know, any of that like abundant energy, why not have just more of it on your side rather than projecting scarcity onto the future? So I do mm -hmm. think is that, you know, you can always control your attitude and that is a good, you know, piece of the puzzle for you. But it's also really important that you, you know, talk about the, the racial wealth gap and talk about all these issues that are, you know, preventing people from moving up in society or holding people down and you know you generally stay within that same socioeconomic class that you started in and so these are things that we do need to address but I don't think going the other way and saying manifestation is hurting you is also the answer um, and you know even with people that like win the lottery if they haven't done any mindset work you know most of those people they don't have that money for the rest of their lives so they don't make stable investments that pay off over their whole life like that money comes and goes so you do need that mindset work behind it but I think everyone, you know, in their role, in their corner of the world, like I keep saying, whether it's your workplace or your particular family or whatever resources and circumstances you have, you can do something in your power because, because whatever situation you're in, there is anti-blackness and there is racism in that area. It doesn't matter where you are, whether it's the beauty industry, the wellness industry, every single area, healthcare has that issue. 
Mm-hmm. So no matter where you are, you can do something. And I think that, you know, that conversation in terms of the spiritual world or wellness comes back to us to say, what are you doing to make it more equitable? And we do need to talk about, like, are there forms? Are there grants? Are there scholarships? You know, what resources do we actually have? Can you connect with nonprofits in your area? Like, these are things that creators need to give access to. And I think in general, there needs to be a greater build between philanthropy and nonprofit and the spiritual and wellness industry because in whatever area there are organizations that will help people for free or for whatever but if coaches can give their clients access to those resources like how great is that you know you're just like handing them over and those partnerships can really begin to form in communities and that can bring so much change but it's just about bridging those gaps and reaching out and for me, when I first started my content, like even to this day, I haven't made a penny off of my YouTube channel, but I have, I upload there consistently and I do it because I'm so passionate about people having free access to mental health resources and topics of personal growth. And even if you are able to like financially afford it, if you live in a rural area, you just might not have access to that kind of thing, period, you know, a therapist or whatever. And so to have online resources that are free through my podcast and my newsletter and my blog and my YouTube channel that really allows more people to join in on this conversation and I think that that's really important as well so whatever you can do as a creator to you know increase equity and to build more partnerships I think that's like really vital and that's where we can really build the conversation that's not perfect but it's a starting point and it's better than where we are now yeah I think that's so important and I especially think what free content does for me is it allows people to actually be a part of the conversation without feeling like there's a barrier to entry. So if you wanna talk to me about spirituality and social justice, you can do that for free. You can come on live with me. You can reply to an email that I send out. Like there are so many ways for you to engage in this discussion without feeling like you have to pay your way into the discussion because we need people's voices and we can't be putting up pay barriers to people just to be able to voice their opinions. And so I really appreciate that. And I think one of the things that sticks out to me the most about what you said is tying it all into self-worth is just this idea of feeling like if all of the teachers in the world are saying that like scarcity scarcity doesn't exist and you're bad if you project out scarcity. And then we have the world telling us, like telling black and brown people that we're worth less, like we, we inherently have a smaller value. It's such an uphill battle for us to get over our own personal money stories and then over the stories that the world tells us about how we're just supposed to have less money because of the color of our skin. So I really appreciate you tying that all together. And again, so many light bulbs going off in my head. So the next question, which you started to touch on a little bit, was just the idea of something you wrote beautifully about how the personal growth conversation needs to extend from self-care to community care. So again, just what prompted you to write that and how do you think we can move in that direction? Yeah, so like, as I mentioned in the article, I kept coming across the idea of like, if it's okay with you, it's okay with the world. Mm -hmm. And tying it back to, you know, my answer on the first question about like boundaries and how it was such a struggle for me to like understand boundaries and set boundaries for myself, I really had this conversation of like, when is it selfish and when is it not? And I really, I don't think that boundaries inherently are selfish at all. I think that they're really important and you should you know, take care of yourself. And I think that entire idea, especially in the wellness space, was kind of born from this, this expectation that women have on themselves to like, make everyone happy at the expense of themselves and so like busy working moms you know with like kids and like all these responsibilities and they're left with like the third shift of the housework and you know all of that stuff contributes to the need for someone to say hey you can set boundaries and you can do something for yourself for once so i don't think that the idea inherently is bad but i think that you know every situation every relationship that we have in life has some sort of compromise or some sort of depth like even with like your pet that you love so much there's going to be times that you don't want to take them out or you don't want to clean up after them but you have to and so in every situation in life in every partnership or any relationship there's compromise and there's some times where you don't love what you're doing but you have to or you should because it it shows care for another person and so that kind of like made me realize that it's it's important to focus on yourself but once we got so focused on ourselves and our own needs then we moved on to making our wants seem like needs and so that 
cycle really kept us in the, in our own little bubble of being selfish. And so that's why I said, you know, we do need to have self-care, but we need to extend it to community care. And when, you know, you do feel content in life and you feel like your life is calm and, and happy or you feel peaceful, then what can you do for your neighbors or for your grandmother or for whoever it is in your life that you're, you know, able to reach out to? And even, you know, to the last question, can you reach out to any nonprofits or charities or, you know, any anything? There's so many options, especially now with the pandemic and with, you know, all these social justice issues and charities and things that are coming out of ways to help. There's so much that you can do, but it's just in not getting caught in that cycle of saying my needs are met. Now, what do I want? And then only living in that space. Yes, I love that. And I think one of the things, again, this is always making me think of so much, but I'm even thinking of the idea of knowing what I want and what I want my life to look like. And I personally don't believe that like I am on the planet just to like, have my basic fundamental needs met and then that's it and I, I should stop wanting things like I really think that I want to have like a beautiful abundant life and I when I'm thinking about the kind of life that I want to have I'll try to project that onto my community so I'll I'll remind myself that like I want this because everybody in the world deserves to have this like we shouldn't have a world where certain people live in abundance and certain people live without and I don't have to believe that just by wanting for myself I am wanting other people to have less. And so that's how I like to think about it is just by um, kind of dreaming bigger for myself, I'm modeling to people that this is what you're capable of achieving and this is what you're capable of having. So again, so many light bulbs. And I, if you want to respond to that, you totally can, or we can move on to the next question. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, I was going to say um, just to the idea of like, um, Sorry, I like like how you were talking about abundance like and the money mindset related to what you just said. I feel like there is that need, especially as BIPOC, to get comfortable with abundance and to get comfortable like having more than exactly what you need. And like there is, you know, everyone is on that personal journey. I think I think most people are of you know deciding what success means and deciding what abundant looks like for them and how they can achieve that. And I think that you know, I. I think we should all be thriving. Like we shouldn't live to survive. And uh -huh. I definitely not like what I was really like trying to say, but I think just like helping people along that way. And I think you don't like, when I look at, you know, just surviving, like that's where kind of self care starts. And then you have, you know, self care and building yourself. And then from there you say, okay, what can I now do for my community? And it's okay to have that indulgence period. And it's okay to also care for other people when your life isn't as abundant as you'd like it. But as long as you're in that period of, I have my needs met, now I'm caring for myself and then moving forward, that's really kind of where that magic of community care happens and can start and I think yeah a big part of that is seeing that you know there are people that look like us that are like killing it and doing it on their own terms and aren't working for a corporation and don't have this over their heads you know like that's also beautiful so yeah we do need more models of that and that's why I love that so many people are making you know Instagram pages and are publicizing themselves in their life because that is something that that wasn't there even like 10 years ago you know mm -hmm. I was looking for all the time and we didn't have that we had like magazines with like white girls on it and that was pretty much it and you didn't get to see like what does a girl boss do and what do, does their day, daily life look like and what can women of color achieve that isn't even through this corporate ladder like there's so many options so we do need to make you know those options just available to more people just by showing them what's possible Yes, I love that. I think, yeah, that's so important. And just the representation piece, which I'm huge on because all my tarot stuff is like images and responsible display of images and everything. And I think the Instagram piece is so important because even just following accounts of like people of color who are doing well and who are happy and who are enjoying their lives and who aren't struggling, like just reminds you that it doesn't have to be a struggle just because the world tells you that you will struggle because you're brown or because you're black, you know? So that is filling my heart with so much joy. And the last question, I think we're already moving on to, um, but what are some words of encouragement that you would offer to someone who is othered by society for whatever reason, and they are trying to access spiritual growth content or personal development content, and they're not seeing what they need to see. They're not seeing positive images of themselves. So what? how would you encourage them? Yeah, so 
I think I'm going to start with like a couple tips and then move on to like general, my general message that I want to say. But mm -hmm. my first tip is I dealt with this so much when I was like working on my blog, if I wanted like stock images of like any people of color at all, like that was a big issue. And then also when I was like on Pinterest or, or in magazines, like looking to make a vision board and I was just, you know, cutting things out and a lot of things were just nature related or whatever. But then, you know, every time I looked for a person or a face or whatever, then, you know, I was kind of left out again. And so yeah. one thing I did with my vision boards was that, you know, I had certain pictures of places or of apartment decor, whatever was on there. But then I also included some, some pictures like of myself in my own vision board. So I did that and I would even like include like, you know, some important friendships in my life, like a picture of like me and my friends, like living life and like loving it, like that would be on there because I want more of that and I want to create and manifest more of that. And, you know, there's ways that you can say, I'm going to be my own representation. Like I don't care what's out there. Like this is my life and this is how I see my future. And this is, and so really, again, with like that making space for yourself, that's a huge thing that I did um, that really, really helped me. Um, and then in terms of, just like that's really the reason that my business started completely i didn't know that this was what i wanted to do but i kind of started out with the blog and started moving forward from there but i was like this is, i started to create what i wanted to see and i just like want to tell whoever's watching like, you don't have to wait for permission for someone to say like we need you if you feel like you need you or you need whatever idea you have then do it like put it out there because people will respond even if it takes time but if you're committed to something like that then it'll it is something the world needs if you find you know that you need it um and I, I love that and then just in terms of like my general message that I would say I would really just say like you belong you are here for a reason um only you determine your worth only you determine who you are how beautiful you are how worthy you are um, and no one can take that realization away from you. Once you decide it, it's done and that's yours and you own it and you belong there and there's nothing else that anyone can say to knock you down from your own understanding of your worth. And I would also say that, like we were just talking about, you know, you deserve joy and you deserve fun and you deserve laughter and lightheartedness and to think about all these, you know, beautiful things that happen in the world. You deserve for the small things to make you happy and that is like you, yeah, you just deserve to thrive. You don't have to fix everyone's problems. You don't have to just worry about the hard stuff and you don't have to worry that you're a burden to anyone around you. Um, and you don't have to perform to be worthy. That's really the biggest thing. Your worthiness is inherent and you don't have to do anything to achieve it because it is what you say it is. Oh, that's so beautiful. I feel like that was like you're speaking to me directly and it just, I love it so much. And I also, this is such a side note, but I really appreciate you saying that about stock images because, oh my gosh, I know Erica is a photographer. Hi, Erica, you're watching. But like the stock images that exist very rarely will have non-white faces or non-white hands. Like I'll look at like tarot images a lot for my website or whatever. And it's always like a white hand with a tarot card. And I don't understand why it has to be that way. And so that just causes me so much frustration. And it's like these little microaggressions, right? Like these small things that will cause you pain or like little bits of abrasion. And I've never said that out loud before, like, oh, the stock images are only white people and that frustrates me. But as soon as you said it, I was like, yes, I get to be frustrated about this. Like this is a frustrating thing. So thank you for vocalizing that because that just made me feel so validated and I appreciate you. And I'm sure a lot of other people appreciate you too and want to know how they can connect with you, how they can learn about you. So I'm just going to ask, we're all wondering, what do you offer and how can people work with you? Yeah, so I mainly do one on one coaching. So I have a three month premium coaching package and then I have a three month um, just self worth coaching package. So what makes the premium one premium is that um, I basically have like office hours. So what that means Ooh. is that five days out of the week, I will um, set like, you know, a time probably between 10 a.m. and noon every day to like read through any email. So if we're coaching together and we didn't have a session, but you had, you know, either a, a breakthrough, like something positive, or, you know, if you're really struggling or, you know, something came up and you kind of freaked out or, you know, you're, you're coming up with a mindset block, you can email me. And within 24 hours for the majority of our coaching, the, those five days a week, I will get back to you within right. that time frame. Um, 
responding to your problems so you don't feel like you're on your own and that was one of the things that bugged me about therapy was like i was in this great session for an hour once every three weeks and the rest of the time i had nowhere to go and so that's kind of what this addresses um and then the other thing is that i create like more personalized workbooks mini workbooks throughout the course so um journaling prompts exercises reminders things that we've discussed in our um, online coaching i will kind of compile that into workbooks throughout so that you can refer to them or print them out at different points if you want to work on them again. Um, and then the regular coaching package, it's uh, $5.99. The other one, the premium is $9.99 and the regular is $5.99. So the only things that you don't get is you don't get the office hours and then you also don't get the workbook, but you still get the same recommendation. So I'll still be giving you the same prompts, the same exercises, the same reminders. It's just more on you to keep track of writing that down and, and referring back to it if you need to, um, but you still get all the same coaching and the same number of sessions and all of that. And then I do offer um, one-time coaching sessions as well. Those are $99 and it's just 60 minutes. Um, so if you're dealing with a specific problem or procrastination or you're feeling stuck in some way, it's a really good like refresh to just sit down with someone, talk through everything, talk through maybe if there's a bigger issue or I can kind of help you figure out what could be the bigger issue under everything that's surface level. Um, and that's just a one-time thing. And the final way is an online course. So it's called How to Trust Yourself, The Guilt-Free Guide to Decision-Making. And is a um, online course. It's primarily self-taught through videos and exercises and things like that. But it actually includes four group coaching sessions with me. So you'll still get to speak with me, ask me questions, and that kind of thing. So yeah, those are the ways. Um, everything you can find through my link tree um, and also through my website. But for the um, coaching package, um, if you just add yourself onto my email list, I will let you know when the slots are opening to sign up. Amazing. Uh, well, this was such a great conversation. I'm so excited about you and about all of the people that got to be in your energy. And I'm just really grateful for your time. So thank you so, so, so much. I am... Yeah, I'm just really grateful for you. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. This was amazing. And like you asked me literally the best questions. Like I had the best time in this conversation. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me and holding space for this. And yeah, I appreciate it. All right, well, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Bye, everyone. All right, guys. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you have any questions for me or Samara, feel free to leave those below. Happy healing.